Rodolfo Russo, who we will talk about precision holography and microstate uh, geometries. Okay, so th uh, thank you very much for uh, the invitation and for organizing the workshop. Uh, yeah, so what I uh, would like to present today is not something that is teaching new information about black hole microstates, so sorry for that, but it's a bit the other way around, so what we can learn from what we already know about microstates uh, of black holes in a completely different uh, setup, uh, and in particular, uh, interesting information that we can derive from that knowledge about the strongly coupled conformal field theories of the holographic type. So, uh, I mean, this is uh, uh, in the second part of the conference, so most of the background has already been discussed, but let me uh, just uh, uh, briefly recall uh, what are the key ingredients. Uh, so, uh, the two uh, framework I'll be using are the probably the best known are the SCFT dualities. They are both uh, already there in the original paper in 97 of Maldacena, and one is the uh, duality between type 2b string theory on ADS5 cross S5 and the N equal 4 super Yam Mills. Uh, and the other is the type 2b uh, string theory on ADS3 cross S3 and then either K3 or T4 and the D1, D5 uh, CFT. Um, so in some sense, uh, one message of this talk is that uh, there are conceptually, uh, th th conceptually these two things are very close. Uh, there might be some subtle differences here and there, uh, but the general picture is, is the same, uh, and it's just that sometimes maybe it's easier one uh, incarnation, uh, and sometimes it's easier the other incarnation, but it's good to keep in, in mind uh, the similarities between the two. And uh, clearly one point uh, uh, that uh, I've been already discussed and I'll be using is that the fact that the strongly coupled CFT, so when there is a coupling in, the, in these dual CFTs, uh, so I call it lambda just because it's reminiscent of the TOPS coupling in the N equal 4 case. So when that coupling becomes large, and at the same time also uh, the uh, central charge becomes large, then the, the problem is well approximated by uh, supergravity. And uh, uh, one of the very first key uh, um, checks of this duality is looking at the um, um, low-lying states of the CFT and how they are mapped into supergravity fluctuation around ADS. So, uh, in some sense, uh, the N equal 4 case was done before the duality in 1985, quite remarkably, uh, and then the ADS3 cross S3 uh, case was analyzed later uh, after uh, the holographic duality became uh, fashionable and uh, relevant. Uh, and uh, you have a precise dictionary uh, between uh, local operator on the CFT side and just quadratic fluctuation around the empty ADS. Now, uh, one motivation, one theme that is coming from the study of uh, black hole microstate is that the spectrum becomes much more complicated when you look not at low-lying states, but states whose conformal dimension is of the order of the central charge, right? And we have seen yesterday uh, talks uh, about this. And uh, uh, let me just remind what we learned yesterday. One of the key distinctions is that uh, uh, you have two broad class of states. One uh, goes under the name of graviton gas, uh, and the other is the rest, if you want. And uh, uh, um, uh, in this regime, at strong coupling, uh, what I would like to convey is that uh, we have a good understanding of the graviton gas sector, uh, and uh, we are still trying to uh, have a more quantitative understanding of the rest. And since uh, uh, I want to focus on the part we are uh, more uh, at ease. So this talk will focus on the gravita gas sector. And one of the goal is to give you uh, a mo uh, kind of uh, the precision bit 
uh, of the title, uh, is to give uh, a pre precise description of what we mean by graviton gas states and how this description is reflected uh, uh, on the gravity side. So if you want, it's a bit kind of the complementary part uh, of Chemin Chang's talk, who was focusing uh, at uh, uh, small values of lambda and one loop correction. Now it's the same class of states, but in the, uh, uh, in the regime. Uh, I will not be able to follow the state uh, uh, through all the, the evolution from small lambda to big lambda, but you will see that there, there are no renormalization theorem that sometimes help us in connecting the two endpoints. Very good. So, um, so what is this uh, graviton gas state? So we start from the single particle state. Uh, and then let me just add an index i for flavor. So you can think about tray z square as being one single particle, tray z cube to being another single particle, x, y, and z are the three complex scalar of n equal four. And uh, uh, then you can th think of uh, producing a state whose dimension is not two or three, but is large, just by putting together many of these constituents. So graviton gas is a multi-particle state. Now it's something that may be in flat space is a bit in, uh, not intuitive because you cannot construct a bound state of massless particle, but in ADS you can. And this is one example of a graviton gas state in n equal four super young mills, which is also what David was mentioning in his talk. So you start from the lowest dimension uh, uh, supergravity state, so this is tray z square is a protected state, uh, so it's dual to some uh, fluctuation of the metric and the four form, and then you take, uh, 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 you mm, uh, make uh, p of this object all together in the same point, and uh, uh, you create a state whose dimension is related to uh, the dimension of the constituents and the number of the constituents you have. Um, you can do something very similar in uh, the D1-D5 CFT, so I will not enter into the details, but uh, here I'm a bit using the language of the orbifold CFT that we have seen in some of the previous talk. So you can think about each of these parentheses as some elementary excitation, and then you see you put many of them, and then you create a state which has p copies of these elementary excitations. So one of the thing I would like to uh, discuss is the precise definition of this product, right? So what happens when you put many things together and uh, that's why there is this uh, uh, decoration. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so yes. So le let me say, yeah, that's a very good point. So if you want, I can t call it super graviton gas in the sense that these are states constructed by all uh, the, uh, um, uh, the particles that you have in your super gravity theory. So it can be the graviton, the dilaton, the axion, uh, right, scalars, right? So these are protected multiplets. So these objects individually, they are protected. Uh, uh, and then the idea is you put many of them o on top of each other. Now, this is, uh, may maybe let me take the occasion of this question just to uh, clarify this point, it's written there. So the constituents themselves are supersymmetric, but it is not necessary that globally the heavy states you are producing is supersymmetric. Right, you could, uh, you could, and we consider with Nick and Anthony, and uh, uh, um, we consider cases where these graviton gas states are non-supersymmetric, but they are just made out of mutually non-BPS constituents, which themselves separately are BPS, and they are interesting, of course, for uh, black hole construction, but it's not something I'm covering in this talk. Very good. So this is, uh, so we have an, in an intuition of what these states are from uh, the CFT point of view. Now, uh, how, do they lack, uh, how do they look like from the gravity point of view? Well, uh, since the dimension is very large, right? Uh, so the dimension is a bit like the energy, the mass, uh, and the is order of the central charge. The central charge is order one over G 
Newton. So you, we are keeping effectively G times M fixed. So we have something that uh, has uh, a geometric scale, right? A classical geometric scale. So we expect that these states back react and produce a non-trivial uh, geometry. Now, uh, I think the second point there is uh, uh, what yesterday was also discussed. So when you think about uh, uh, this piece, uh, this piece is the number of constituents, right? So this is P is the number of the elementary object. So you can think about P being large of the order C, but still the ratio P over C is small, right? So we are doing a double scaling limit, P large, C large, P over C fixed, but then you can take it small. So when you do this limit, then the geometry reduces to a linear perturbation around anti the sitter, right? And the linear perturbation is what? Is the uh, perturbation of the field dual to the uh, uh, operator, exactly following this dictionary. So once you know what your constituents are, so if you want to find the solution dual to this object or the solution dual to this object, well, you look at the uh, field that is dual to one constituent, and then at the linear order, the solution has that field switched on, that field which is non-trivial. But then you want to find an exact solution of the supergravity equation, so you have to solve the, su the, the equation exactly and look at the back reaction, the quadratic uh, back reaction of this object. And this is a bit of an art, uh, uh, but let me just mention the two old uh, uh, um, examples of such solution dual to heavy states that have featured already earlier today, the LLM geometries in n equal four superior meals, and the simplest two charge geometries of uh, uh, Luni Matur and many people after them in the D1, D5 CFT. Now, there may be a uh, 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 confusion uh, uh, right away. So you say, well, uh, these geometries, as we, uh, as we just uh, have been reminded, are determined by a set of continuous data, some curve, some, uh, some surface, right? But on the other hand, the states I brought for you is determined by set of discrete data. How many constituents you have, right? So how can I claim that this state is dual to a geometry? Well, the slightly more refined version that I think already David uh, 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 mentioned is that the state dual, uh, the geometry is dual uh, to a coherent state uh, which is not uh, uh, just, uh, doesn't have a fixed number of constituents, but is a linear combination of states with many constituents. And uh, uh, already by now, almost 20 years ago, uh, Skanderis and collaborator uh, uh, proposed an explicit form for uh, the uh, D1, D5 state dual to these geometries. Right, you see that this state has a parameter, eta, that is a continuous parameter. I can dial the eta between zero and one. And uh, that continuous parameter is mapped in the curve defining this, uh, this, uh, um, this, this solution. So the coherent state is something that, uh, 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 I mean, exactly as you do in, uh, uh, when you do a laser, right, in electromagnetism, is uh, kind of the description that brings the discrete quantum uh, part uh, into a classical description uh, with a continuous parameter. Now, this, this uh, state, when n is very large, uh, and eta is, uh, is finite, so is like one half, is very picked, that sum is very picked to a particular value, so we can still say that the geometry is dual to a state with, uh, on average, uh, that number of constituents, and I call the peak of the distribution uh, P bar. Very good. Now, what is the aim of this talk? So uh, the aim of this talk is to extract information about correlation function between uh, this heavy operator described by geometries and light operators that are described by fluctuations around these geometries. 
And the uh, information that we, uh, kind of interesting information in CFT uh, is encoded in correlation functions. And these are the four point correlation function that already uh, David already mentioned. Uh, so one, uh, one information is how you, uh, uh, how you can derive uh, those correlator by doing uh, a um, bulk calculation which captures the uh, strong coupling limit of that result. Um, now, what is the particular incarnation of uh, the results that we have? Is, okay, one thing is we want to revisit, uh, as David mentioned, the light limit of these results. So start from the geometry. The geometry describes a state, a multiparticle state with many constituents. And then we take this ratio, P over C to be small, and then we should match to correlators that are of type of light. Uh, so one thing is revisit that uh, problem in ADS3. Uh, and the other thing is describe analog problem, the same problem in ADS5, just to show that the two things are very parallel, very similar, and show what we can learn about the heavy state by looking at these correlators. Now, at this point, you might complain, right? You say, well, um, uh, since you started from a geometry, uh, that geometry, in order to be reliable, has to have low of curvature, so the mass of the object producing the geometry should be not too small. So it's true you can take p bar over c small, but it has still to be an order one object if I want to use a geometry. So that's why I'm saying, okay, the result should be reliable in a lightish heavy regime. So it's a heavy state, but then you take the mass to be perturbative. But someone unexpectedly, we discovered that in the ADS3 case that the result you get in this regime is on the nose identical to the one you would expect for the full light, 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 light correlator. So what you can do is use this approach as an alternative uh, way to find correlators among light operators that does not use Witten diagrams uh, as an ingredient, right? So that's why it's a bit technically simpler. And it's kind of amusing to, uh, to see that the first light, 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 light correlator that was derived for ADS3 was derived in this way. Uh, and only as a second step derived independently to show that it gets the right, the same result. So the, the limit is, is smooth uh, between the heavy, heavy, light, light and the light, 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 light correlator. And so you can use this to build new information to find, to calculate something that has not been calculated before. Uh, so which are uh, correlators between a uh, single particle state and light multi-particle state. So I would like to show some, uh, this is work in progress, and so I'll just, just to show what, what we are in that point. Yeah, please. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, is really, if you take uh, M, uh, GM fixed or not? Right, so or if you want the delta over C. So you are in the, in the large C limit, and then the, the, the two non-commuting limit would be, I take C infinity with delta fix. That I would call it light. Or you can say I double scale, I take delta to infinity, C to infinity, and delta over C fixed. Okay, the D3 brain is like the giant graviton is a bit in the middle in the sense that the dimension scales, but not enough to produce, if you just have one single D3 brain, not enough to produce a back reaction. So those are semi-classical states. So semi-classical states are states that are not of the type of particles, but still you can interpret them as object in a fixed metric, right? So, so this is the intermediate uh, kind of, uh, uh, of, of things. So what I've been doing, I, I'm not, I will not be using 
the giant graviton that we have seen yesterday. Right? You, you could do, you could do, but it's not something I'm doing in my talk. So I'm thinking about building heavy objects just by, by using quanta. So with delta equal one, and then put order C of them. So in SUN n equal four, uh, it would be order n square object. Okay. So th there is, a, uh, uh, so just to advertise a bit the work we did, so there uh, is separating in two sides, uh, the bulk side and the CFT side. And uh, on the bulk side, I will mainly be using this uh, work of last year, uh, done in collaborator uh, uh, with Anthony, Nick, uh, uh, Stefano, and Bogdan Ganchev. And uh, on, the CFT c uh, on the CFT part, I will be mainly using uh, this work uh, also with Nate and Marcel, who are here, uh, and, and, some, and some work in progress uh, 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 with Don Cao and with Stefano. Okay, so l uh, let me start from uh, uh, one, uh, from uh, the ads 3 part, because I think there is a lesson we learned there that is useful also for the uh, n equal four case. And uh, let me start from this solution uh, that I'm not showing to you, I'm just telling you that it exists, that is dual uh, to, this, uh, to these states, and this solution was written by uh, uh, Marika Costas and Kani Scheider in 2007, and it's a two-charge solution, so it's uh, something that has been uh, studied uh, uh, a lot. Um, and uh, uh, Nick, uh, a couple, uh, a few years ago, noticed that this solution sits in a 3D truncation of the full supergravity, right? And so this makes, uh, 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 this is interesting from the supergravity point of view because 3D equations are simpler, right? So you can think of uh, uh, deriving that solution and other solutions related to those just by using the, three, uh, the 3D equations. And of course, uh, they had a lot of fun in studying this, also with Pierre. Uh, um, and at a certain point, they found uh, that there is another solution uh, that has that is very similar but yet different and sits in the same 3D truncation. And this solution, from the point of view of the three-dimensional gauge supergravity, has some peculiar feature. So the mass metric of the gauge supergravity becomes more symmetric th than what you would expect. Uh, and so they dub that as a special locus, right? So it, it has a special status from the gauge supergravity point of view. And uh, for uh, uh, at least a couple of years, in particular in these conferences, Nick was asking me this question, right? So I have this new solution. This new solution has the same fall off, at, uh, the same leading order fall off at the ADS boundary as the solution by uh, 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 Costas and Marika. But it's a different solution, right? As a full supergravity solution is completely different. And then he was asking me, what does it mean from the CFT point of view? And then, for at least for two years, I told him, well, I don't know, right? Till, uh, till we, we understand something, and so that's uh, what I want to uh, share, even though Anthony talked a bit about this last year. So let me refresh that material, because, uh, because it will be useful for what I want to say. So um, in order to understand what, what this solution means on the CFT side, one uh, tool we have is to look at three-point functions, right? So object like this one, right? So you have heavy operator, and you want to see what light operators are sourced by this heavy operator, right? Uh, so one thing we know is that these three-point functions are protected if they preserve globally a 0 0.04 SUSY. So it is sufficient that, like, the left or the right sector of the uh, CFT2 is, uh, uh, is not excited, uh, and then the, that quantity is, is protected. So you can calculate this quantity in the orbifold CFT, this limit. You can calculate it in the supergravity regime, and then if you have an intuition on how the state would flow between weak coupling and strong coupling, uh, these two numbers should match even if you don't have the full 
the full uh, uh, evolution, Th these two numbers should match. Well, they, they are not just numbers, right? Th they, in general, uh, are, are functions of these parameters, right? So it's a, it's a non-trivial matching, right? It's not something two equal two, so it's, uh, you, you have to, uh, to work. Um, and how do you, how, okay, I will not spell out the calculation explicitly, but just conceptually, right? So from the gravity point of view, what you look, you look at the decay of the fields of your solution around the ADS boundary. And from how this field decay around the ADS boundary, you read these three-point functions. From the CFT point of view, well, if you work at weak coupling, it's just uh, a combination of two ingredients. So one ingredient is some elementary three-point function between the constituents of your multigraviton gas state and the light operator you are using, right? So that's really big contraction if you are doing n equal four super young mills, right? So it's a combination of that object and some combinatoric aspects that tells you what element of these sums are involved and doing this sum. So it's a combinatoric aspect and the CFT Oh, okay, I'm not sure I will be. Oh, okay. Um, very good. So, in particular, this tells you some information about this elementary overlap between this object, or one half, one half. These are the constituents of your heavy state and uh, uh, these objects here that are the light states. So this, this kind of precise matching was started in this paper 2007, and uh, at that point they checked the uh, agreement between bulk and CFT for all light state of dimension one, the lowest dimension. And this was already non-trivial to, to uh, provide support uh, to the definition of the heavy state. But then later, uh, uh, David and Sami, and then also with Stefano Giusto, they pushed this whole program at uh, the next order, dimension two, uh, which is uh, uh, more challenging, and they found precise agreement uh, also at that level. And uh, I worked uh, uh, on that topic as well, but uh, kind of uh, generalizing with three charge superstrata, so this is something I will not uh, I will not cover. So let's let's focus just on the simplest case. So what I want to uh, emphasize is that for the geometry uh, uh, of Costas uh, and collaborators, you have uh, expectation values, so three point functions that are proportional to these uh, uh, elementary key ingredients. That is a bit strange because this is a is an extremal correlator. So it involves three objects. These objects here as dimension one, it appears twice. And this object as dimension two. So it is a three point function between dimension one, dimension one, and dimension two objects. And generically, this object here, this extremal, uh, this extremal correlator are believed to vanish. Uh, so in principle, one would have expect this object to be zero. Instead, you look at the uh, answer you get from the supergravity, and what you get is that this object is non-zero. So how do you interpret that? Well, the interpretation is uh, in the definition of this multiparticle operator, so that's where the precision bit really comes in. So in the definition of this star, so uh, in the definition of this multiparticle operator, so when you try to, when you start putting together the constituents, what this is telling you is that on the, in this language, the constituents always sit in different, uh, uh, in different parts of the orbifold CFT. So here I'm a bit using a language that I'm happy to discuss separately if, you, if you're interested in. But let me just say that uh, uh, in the definition, you never have two constituents that act simultaneously. So what I'm saying is that the difference between this object here and this object here is that all the mixed terms are the same, 
But when, when this excitation act on the same uh, element, on the same copy, on the left hand side they're absent. And it is exactly this difference that is responsible for the fact that this guy is non-vanishing. Instead, if you define the multiparticle state in this way, which in some sense is the natural way from the CFT point of view, you start from single particle and you just do OPE, you just start putting things together, right? So if you define the multiparticle in this way, then what you would have is that the three-point function, uh, the extremal three-point function vanishes. So then you would expect that depending on the precise definition of your heavy operator, you would have two different geometries. One geometry would yield a non-trivial expectation value for the dimension two operator here, and one geometry would yield a trivial expectation value for the dimension two geometry. So at that point we said, okay, let's see what happens if we use uh, the solution found at the special locus, right? This special locus solution. And then thanks to the technology that uh, 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 David uh, and uh, Samir Awash developed, we checked that indeed for that geometry, uh, uh, the uh, expectation value of all dimension two operator vanish. So uh, this is in some sense uh, 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 a very precise check of, uh, of holography. And uh, in some sense is telling us that in the heavy sector, the naive planar approximation at large C breaks down, right? Because the difference between these two objects is something that you would say subleading in one over n is when both uh, excitation hit the same uh, the same constituents, right? Here you have on the left hand side you have order n square term, and the difference is just of order n terms. So at large c you would be tempted to saying, okay, that difference is immaterial, and I think uh, uh, I maybe even brought this in before realizing this this thing. But then we, we have a very concrete example of two different geometries that at linear order are the same. They start differing at the quadratic order. And the difference is a single particle state, uh, just a new constituent, but is visible in the supergravity limit, right? Uh, so what I want to say, okay, in the, that this story has a precise analog in the n equal four, and so this I'm coming to the exactly the same picture uh, that David was, sh was showing. So you can define also in n equal four many different supergraviton gas state that look the same at the linear order. So one is the one that David mentioned, right? I think this is exactly more or less moral is this, uh, is formula just with a different parameterization. This is the LLM picture that uh, I will not review since David already mentioned that, right? Uh, and uh, uh, starting from this picture, you can write a full 10 dimensional geometry following the LLM rules. And then you can ask what is the dual state? Well, as we, as we see, it starts with this, but then it contains other terms. And the claim is that uh, at uh, quadratic order, at this order, you start seeing a peculiar, a peculiarity of this, uh, which is that this coefficient here is non-vanishing. So that's the analog of what I mentioned in the D1, D5, when the two, the two uh, excitation hit the same, uh, uh, the same copy and they produce a single particle state. You see there is a mixing here with a single particle state, trace that to the fourth. And the LLM geometry has that object built in. Then you may wonder, okay, can I define a geometry where this A is zero? And actually the geometry is exactly just made out of powers of trace z square, right? Trace z to the cube, trace z to the fourth, and the geometry will be some coherent state of this type, where this object is just power of trace z square. Okay, I think we, we uh, uh, th this question was in our mind for a long time, till uh, Stefano Giusto and his student, 
constructed that geometry very explicitly uh, just last January. And how did I do it? So why was it done just now and not much before? Well, because it uh, uh, just relies on all the gauge supergravity technology that Nick taught us, right? So uh, um, uh, basically what you can do, you can uh, look for a five dimensional gauge supergravity truncation of the 10 dimension, and then play the same trick that they did here for the spatial locus, play it in, in, uh, in five dimension, and it's remarkably similar. Technically is remarkably similar, and they found a new solution with a parameter eta uh, that tells you where this coherent state is picked, but all the coefficients or all the building blocks are just trace z square. And of course, they did the same analysis of the three point function to see that uh, indeed that geometry is consistent with that interpretation. Okay, so maybe let me pause at this point to see whether there are questions. Yeah. Trace the z square. Yeah, I think I think at the end is th is the same as our alpha deformation. Yeah. I, I okay. I'm not in the paper, so. But uh, yeah, I think I think it's remarkably similar to our spatial locus. Yeah. Okay. So. For the last 15, 20 minutes, I guess, uh, uh, I want to use this, this uh, intuition uh, uh, to tell you something new, some, some, some work in progress, uh, which is going uh, uh, beyond the three-point function, right? So moving from the three-point function to the four-point function. And as David mentioned, uh, those objects are generically not protected. Um, so there might be some special cases, but generically are not protected. Uh, uh, and so they encode dynamical information. So the idea, the, uh, the idea is the following. Now that we have a precise dictionary, let's try to use that precise dictionary to get information about uh, strongly coupled CFTs. So the, uh, the uh, quantity we have in mind is this one, is a correlator where now we look uh, at the uh, two-point function of light operator in the background of the heavy operator. So this heavy operator will produce the geometry, so they will disappear. And so it's just quadratic fluctuation uh, around the geometry. And uh, the rule of the games is that once you uh, choose a particular light operator, this corresponds to a particular fluctuation. So this is a supergravity field. This is some axion, dilaton, some scalar, or some more complicated. You have an equation of motion for this field. You want to solve the equation of motion for this field subject to boundary conditions. And the complication is that you have two boundary, I mean, second order equations, so you want to impose two boundary conditions. And one boundary condition is imposed at the boundary of ADS. Uh, and that's the, uh, if you want, the position of this operator. So that's the, that's the perturbation you put. And the other boundary condition is at the center of the geometry. You want to impose that it's a regular thing, right? Uh, and once you have that, everything is fixed, and you can read the, this B. This B is the response, and basically is the correlator you're interested in. Very good. And then, okay, here, um, let me no, just not enter in the details, but it's just how you uh, uh, map uh, the conformal cross ratio z uh, to the position x1, x, uh, so x1, x2, x3, x4. And uh, what I was saying, I mean, I think this is the point Joseph was uh, this guy was asking for. I mean, we are uh, doing here an Euclidean uh, uh, continuation, right, from tau to tau Euclidean. And at, at that point, uh, Poincaré coordinates are just a change of coordinate from global coordinates, right? So you can move from one to the other. Yeah. Sure. 
Sure. Now that, that's super interesting question. Is uh, 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 is outside what I'm uh, I'm considering there, right? So you, you have more in mind time kind of a, a black hole formation thing, right? So uh, you you have your target. You you uh, put a lot of energy inside. Uh, can can I form a larger black hole, right? So that that would me would mean either made this light operator heavy itself would be heavy, 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 heavy correlator, or make it very energetic, a lot of kinetic energy, right? Uh, th these are very interesting uh, uh, observables that I think uh, have not been studied almost at all. So for the time being, you can really think about these objects as fluctuation around this metric. They will not mess up this metric uh, in a substantial way. Very good. So I, I uh, let me start again. F so so I will start to f kind of follow the same logic. Let me start from ADS3 case, even though maybe it's a bit uh, cons uh, less familiar, just because we have results there. I show the results we have there, and then I will uh, tell you about the ADS5, uh, the ADS5 uh, um, generalization of that. So this is a result we derived uh, a few years ago, and that's the expression for this correlator, for this correlator here, but instead of uh, being written in configuration space is the Fourier transform, right? So uh, you see tau and sigma are just transformed into L and, uh, uh, and N. Uh, so in order to have the configuration space answer, I should do these sums, right? Once you do these sums, you have something that depends on sigma and tau, and when you have sigma and tau, you can go back, uh, and then sigma and tau are just z and z bar. So this is the correlator you have. But now with respect to what David was, was doing for, uh, co for the correlator that is, uh, 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 we use as heavy state of this geometry by Skanderis and collaborator, we can do the, the calculation exactly in the parameter eta. So we don't need to ex expand, right, uh, saying that the heavy state is light. So th this is a, a result which is valid for an arbitrary heavy state. It, ca it, can, be, it can be really heavy. Right, so the idea is uh, first do the calculation exactly, and then expand for small values of one minus eta only at the end. So in some sense, this is an alternative approach to what David was doing, right? Which uh, uh, um, is in this case can be can be can be done. And uh, uh, what you do is you get a correlator, which is function of eta, and then you can decompose. And then from here, you can read the correlator, uh, if you want the modes of this correlator, that are correlators that uh, have an integer n that tells you how many constituents uh, you have in the heavy operator. So uh, let me see. Uh, this is the case C1. So C1 is the case where the heavy operator here corresponds to P equal 1. So you made the, the heavy operator completely light, right? So you said, okay, I do the calculation from a state with many constituents, and then I fish out the contribution that comes from the term with just one constituent, right? And uh, once you fish out that contribution, right here, C1, then you can ask, is this just the light, 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 light correlator? Uh, here, the light, 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 light correlator uh, that people know. So basically, let's, let's do this expansion. You have a C0, a C1, and then this C1 comes out as kind of ugly, ugly answer. And you see, uh, the, the details are not very important, so that's why it's also written small. Uh, but just let me uh, highlight that involves uh, uh, dilogarithm, polylogarithm of order two. So this pi two has lie two and lie one and lie zero. So this is the answer that you get uh, for the correlator of uh, uh, all objects 
that are single particle states. And then you can ask, is, does this have anything to do with what I know about these correlators? And the answer is yes, because you can rewrite that answer in terms of the D functions that David, uh, uh, that David uh, introduced in this previous talk, right? So what I'm saying is that this answer here, which is uh, made out of several terms, a bit are hidden in the definition of this P2, that are the block Bigner functions, uh, other bits are there explicit. You can just collapse everything in, a, in, in just one single term here, this D1122, which is one particular D function. Uh, and this D function, uh, naturally arises as one of the conformal integral that people have been studying for, for many other reasons, right? So they say this is the 4D conformal box integral. So this is the, uh, some old stories, and then when we discovered this in 2018, then we uh, used this to, genera to generate many ADS3 uh, light, 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 light correlator. But at a certain point, we said, OK, at this point, let's try also to look at the next order in the 1 minus eta square uh, expansion, so this C2. And this C2 should be uh, something of this type. So a correlator where you have four local operators, but two of these four local operators are multiparticle operators, right? Now are made of two, two constituents. So O square, O, O, O square. And there is nothing to compare with, right? There is no independent derivation of, uh, of these correlators. Our suspicion was that the answer, I mean, the obvious guess is that the answer you get from this construction, which is a supergravity construction, resumes all three level diagrams of this type, right? It does not contain diagrams of this type because these are loop diagrams. Right, but it should contain all the three level connected diagrams uh, of this type. So in some sense, what you could do, uh, but it's a complicated calculation that has, has no one has attempted so far, is to calculate a six point function and then do OPE to uh, pairwise create these double particle operators. And that would give you an answer that in principle comes from written diagrams. And then you would, uh, you would say, okay, does this answer uh, match this one, right? And then this one is a, is a complicated answer because it has this generalization of the block Wigner, and now they have polylogarithm of order four. So it's definitely a new set of functions, right? It's the, not the same function that appear in, four, uh, in, in the standard three, uh, four point correlator of single particle state is a new set of functions. And uh, we tried for a, for a bit to say, okay, maybe there is some simplification similar to this one that uh, uh, is a new family of D functions that will make this answer to look very easy. We look for, for that and, okay, we didn't succeed. So we published the paper, but fortunately no one looks at the paper, right? So after a few years we say, okay, uh, with a bit of better understanding, the obvious thing seems to work. So you can define uh, a generalization of the one uh, loop box integral. So a generalization of this object here, where instead of having one loop, you have two loops. So a ladder diagram with a propagator in the middle. You can define a conformal integral. You can check that this is a conformal integral. And the answer for this conformal integral was calculated long ago, and is written in terms of polylogarithm, right? So these are called the ladder function. And then you can say, okay, let me define something very similar uh, to this, but now with the two-loop ladder integral, and then define derivatives of these two-loop ladder integrals, which are those that gives this one, one, two, two, right? And then you can check that this complicated answer here, this one, can be rewritten in terms of just some of these two terms. The extra advantage of this is that this object here has a nice Mellin transform, we, uh, as was discussed in these papers. 
And so this may be is the beginning of also stunning these multi-particle correlators in melting space instead of, uh, uh, of configuration space. And then you can ask, okay, what happens if you go further? If you go to triple particle state, right? Can you do something now where instead of, of having uh, the ladder integral at two loops, you have the ladder integral at three loops? And this involves polylogarithm of order six. And the answer is yes, right? You can take the, un uh, the correlator that we obtained with the Marcel and Nate, and uh, you can write in a very similar fashion in terms of just few terms of this uh, uh, generalized D function. So one message is that, okay, there seems to be a nice structure. Yes? Can you summarize what was the mistake or what didn't you note when you wrote your... No, I think there was just lack of uh, imagination. So you should have looked at the two-loop uh, diagram and... Yeah, yeah, no, of course we did, but uh, uh, we... we uh, um, uh, I don't think we arrived uh, uh, to, the, to the right identifications. Yeah. I think it was just a technical uh, lack of uh, lack of confidence, if you want. <laughs> uh, also, maybe another thing which is uh, a bit changing is that we thought that there was some peculiarity of ADS3 at the time. So maybe the ADS3 story is a bit more complicated. Now, what I was uh, uh, I, I just in one slide uh, uh, I want to convey is that uh, uh, the very same structure that I'm discussing here seems to be present also in n equal four. So that's why we went back, right? So we were studying the n equal four case, right? And we were looking at these uh, single particle correlators and then double particle correlators in n equal four, and then studying this, uh, uh, this story of n equal four, which is what David uh, started mentioning. So we found that, that again, the light limit of the heavy, heavy light light correlator reproduces the well-known result for uh, the light. So the limit seems to be smooth, right? There is no uh, uh, not surprise. And, uh, mm, and then uh, at that point we say, okay, it seems that the ADS5 story really follows the ADS3. There isn't much novelty. Uh, and then in ADS5, uh, there is a better understanding on the CFT side. And so we start in looking again in parallel between the two. Uh, at the uh, um, uh, uh, double particle correlators. So while we were uh, looking again at the problem, we noticed this. Um, so, uh, okay, I, I'm not reporting a question because it's, uh, uh, still we don't have all the details under control, but uh, le let me say that it seems that one can write uh, the C2, the correlator with two double particle in terms of derivatives of this uh, uh, new, uh, new D function, modulo some term that are giving hard time. Uh, it seems that you can still, you, you can study the Melling formulation of the result. And of course, you would be, it would be interesting to extend to uh, multi-particle correlators of our order. And this is interesting because it's a way to ac uh, access new data in the CFT, right? So it's a window to uh, multi uh, uh, correlator with a uh, uh, higher point correlator with more external states without the kinematic complication of the higher point function, right? Because if you study the higher point function, you will have many cross ratio, right? It's becoming kinematically very complicated. So this is a way to look at that problem without the, uh, uh, the, the complication uh, of, uh, uh, of the higher point function. So, so let me conclude. So I hope I convinced you that the, we have a good understanding of what the dual description of the graviton gas states uh, uh, is. Uh, gravity is able to uh, resolve some fine details on how the multiparticle states are defined, right? How you do the OP. You change the OP and you find different gravity solution. Of course, they are not completely independent. At the linear order, they are the same. But the nonlinear completion of gravity knows about uh, uh, the definition of the multiparticle states. And we have examples, both in n equal four super Young Mills and the D1, D5 CFT, 
of different solutions which have different completion, like the LLM and the geometry of uh, uh, Stefano and his students. Unexpectedly, the light limit, unexpectedly, may be question mark, maybe some, some of the uh, discussion yesterday uh, ca can be used to understand this point better, but the light limit of, the, of this correlator uh, uh, is smooth, right? There is no order, uh, no issue of uh, ordering of limits. You can uh, make contact with the entirely light correlators, and it's a new way to derive light, 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 light correlators, which can be applied also to correlators where the external states are bound states. And for the time being, there is no independent derivation for, th for this. Of course, there are many uh, questions that are still open and we are trying to address them. Check that the results have the uh, uh, OPE that you would expect from the CFT. Uh, understand better the melding transform. Uh, uh, understand better the connection to higher point amplitude, which might be interesting also for bootstrap and for other things. Uh, and then, of course, uh, more long term is that maybe this understanding can be used also to look at correlators where the heavy states are not in the graviton gas, right? It's going beyond the graviton gas, uh, so it's the opposite limit if you wanted the one we are considering now, states which are really heavy, uh, and maybe the kind of uh, one of uh, uh, kind of goal would be to have uh, a, a completely CFT characterization of some of the black hole puzzle as properties of these correlators. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, I have nothing to say about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, first, I have two questions. One which is a technical question. Just following up what I said before, the special locus in the D1-D5 system involved two parameters, one of which was dual to a flux and related to fermion bilinears, and then the other parameter was dual to a metric mode. Um, in the What's the parallel? And then you had to choose tune one to be the you know one eighth the square of the other to get on the special locus. Is there an analogous version of that story here? I just saw the trace of z squared. I didn't see um, fermion bilinears and those bilinears in two parameter family. Yeah, I, I think you are asking about the. I mean, in some sense, I think uh, is the is the uh, difference between these two geometries, right? So the uh, LLM geometries you can think a bit like about the vanilla superstratum. Mm -hmm. Those geometries uh, have uh, a VEV, uh, which is non-trivial for the dimension four operator, which is the analog of the dimension two for our case. And this geometry here of Stefano is the analog of the uh, spatial locus, right? So, uh, but there are, okay, there are many questions. I don't know whether the LLM geometry uh, here sits in the, in the truncation. Maybe, uh, maybe in that case to see this VEV, uh, you have to go outside the truncation. I have that impression. I have the impression that in the uh, uh, five-dimensional case, the truncation itself uh, is uh, restricting, is the, is the guide that you have to land on this geometry. Okay, in the supergravity, you're using only the metric mode, but no, the Fermi bilinear is an n equals Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yang builds a flux. Yeah, yeah, you, so you therefore, yes, I yes, would yes. expect you'd have to turn on a, a flux somehow. W well, wha what I'm saying is that in general, you, you will have more, uh, more, uh, more solution of these types, and uh, th where you uh, excite other modes of the gauge supergravity. And I think those solution would be very interesting because interesting because they could be analog of this one of this solution, but in the quarter BPS case in the eight BPS case. So one way to lower supersymmetry would be to start uh, exciting new fields in the gauge supergravity. Uh, and then, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, and then you have kind of a, a, a guide to find the solution, which is, uh, if you wor work in 10 dimension, would be very difficult. So the other question more for the future, the amazingly cool thing about the special locus in three dimensions is you could build these non-supersymmetric microstrata. Do you think there's going to be a parallel story where you can build really interesting sup non supersymmetric geometries for which you have some confidence of the holographic interpretation? Into yeah, that's also. So I think what Nick is asking is that maybe you can start having multiparticle states where the constituents are like trace z square and trace z bar square. 
right? So separately they are BPS, but they have different, they, they are preserving uh, 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 complementary BPS uh, charges. And now you can put them together and then you can have, uh, uh, you can look for a solution uh, that is the graviton gas of those constituents. Uh, that solution will be non-BPS, or will have anomalous dimension, or you will uh, you will be able to access different set of CFT data. Yeah, I don't know that that uh, yeah, it's a bit of an uh, unexplored territory. I think this is the first paper in in this uh, yeah, in this respect. Other questions? Uh, could you do similar computations in the lean Madasena geometry? in particular the one that due to the BMM quantum mechanics? Um, yeah, I, I don't know, I have to think, uh, yeah, you, you have to tell me more because, uh, so so the, uh, w what what type of operators, yeah, you have to tell me, we probably need to talk yeah, uh, offline, just tell me what yeah. type of operators, because yeah, it, it would be nice, uh, so maybe one lesson we learned is that, um, uh, if you want to solve the equation uh, to really find a fully back reactive geometry, you need some guide, right? So uh, one possibility, one guide we had in the ADS3 case was the, uh, uh, the way that uh, uh, Nick uh, and collaborator had to rewrite the supersymmetric equation in a linear fashion. So re just to reorganize the supersymmetric equation in a way that you can take all them one by one. So that was one guide we have. And then another guide, that, uh, if you want another tool, a complementary tool, was this tool of gauge supergravity. Now this paper here is using the second tool in the context of ADS5, and it's tailored to, this, to states of this type. Uh, now if you come with a different set of uh, constituents, you say, no, I would like to use these constituents because they are a nice family, right? Then uh, the question is, can I have something which is adapted to that set of states? And if so, one can try to, uh, to apply those techniques. Is it possible to compare some of the results for the four point functions to the bootstrap program results? Uh, you mean for the uh, for the new four point function uh, th these ones uh, for, for 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 these ones for for the one with the multi particle correlate th i mean the the, the the four point function with the single particle uh, uh, those have been the now have been all derived independently both in a d s five and in a d s three so there you just compare. Right, you, 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 you do this uh, and, then, uh, and then you compare. And they've been derived by a variety of techniques using melding space, uh, using uh, space time uh, uh, um, uh, techniques. Uh, so, so there you have the results for this strongly, uh, strong coupling limit of the correlators. So there you can compare. For the new ones, so for the one where the external, you, you have two multi-particle operators, uh, uh, there, it's a bit of uncharted territory as far as I know. For the, uh, in, any, in, in the N equals four setting, it's like PP22 type correlator, there's this hidden conformal symmetry in the supergravity limit, which relates at different P. Do you think there's some version of that that would hold for heavy, heavy light, light correlators with a heavy background, y you know, y you can relate different heavy backgrounds with different charges made of different sort of multi-trace guys with different P's. Is there some hidden conformal symmetry in the heavy sector that this kind of interpolating thing you're doing might imply? So you mean the, a recursion relation that connects uh, P, P to two, where now P, uh, let me just see whether I understand the question, um, uh, where, where P is this number, right? It's a multi-particle state with two particles, three particles, right? Because usually when people say, P, P, two, two, they think about trace Z to the P, right? Yep. Now, now the P is a slightly different meaning, right? It's trace Z squared to the P over two, if you want. Right. Uh, so and uh, if I understand your question is whether there is a recursion relation in that. I was actually imagining changing the thing that you take P powers of to a higher BPS guy and then asking about the corresponding oh, heavy Oh, so, so changing this one. Yeah. Yeah, okay, now that's a very good question. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it would if, be you, if you did that and then you had a heavy, heavy, light, light, and you took the limit to get a light, 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 then you know that 
among the all light correlators, there is some hidden conformal symmetry relation. So I wonder if for the heavy, heavy yes. light light ones, there's also something like that. Yeah. So you you mean the um, yeah yeah the ten dimensional uh, of Caron one friends. Yeah. yeah uh, if that survives uh, beyond the light 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 limit, yeah I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Thanks. Okay. Thank we thank uh, Rodolfo again. <laughs>